Tarmer, a professor of personalised medicine in Ulster University and also in Avellino Labs. Today I'm giving a guest lecture. I've been asked to talk about the research that we do and I'm here in this beautiful Painters Hall in, in the centre of London and this is for the Four Liveries lecture. It's a new era of medicine where it's much more personalised. It's not one drug fits all or one therapy fits everyone. It's much more personalised to the person, to the exact reason why they have the disease they have, the exact genetic mistake or mutation that causes their particular disease can be targeted now very specifically. Uh, we're now equipped with a way to target that DNA that we never thought even conceived that would be possible. It's CRISPR. Uh, it's a, an enzyme that naturally occurs in bacteria. In bacteria, they use it to stop viral infections. And it was gene editing where not only could they go in and cut, but they could actually go in, cut it out, fix it and rewrite the human genome. I think all science are still totally and absolutely astounded that we can do this and at the level of the DNA. And it really is a game changer. We're applying it to eyes, so in ophthalmology, and we're applying it to the front of the eye specifically, uh, a collaboration between Ulster University and Avellino Labs in the USA. And we're trying to develop a gene therapy for corneal dystrophies. Avellino is a particular type of corneal dystrophy that's really common in Asia. It's really common in the likes of Japan and Korea and China. Those are countries that have a very high prevalence of myopia as well. Perhaps 90% of the population require spectacles. A large percentage of that population also undertake elective spectacle-free surgery, laser eye surgery. And when they conduct laser eye surgery and they're not pre-screened for this particular condition, they have a genetic mutation, perhaps, that means that they can get problems in their eye after laser eye surgery. So not only can they be born with that mutation, but if they um, decide to have laser eye surgery at some point in time in their life to be spectacle free, that will cause the disease to be enhanced and to incur. So there really is quite a, a target group there that require this therapy. And there is no other therapy available. There's no other treatment available at best these patients are left until they require a corneal transplant and we've got you know, all the inherent problems with that and the shortage of transplants. We went back to these animal models and we injected it into this eye. This eye was controlled and wasn't touched. It didn't just bring it down, it totally disappeared. And you could imagine my laboratory that day and my students involved, we were absolutely fascinated. This really works um, and it worked instantly. The cornea for us is easier for a proof of concept, not only for autosomal dominant genetic diseases, but also for corneal dysteries. Because as you say, the cornea is exterior. You can monitor it, you can see it, you can touch it with the therapy. It's small, so it's obviously, it's easier to treat in terms of quantity of treatment needed. And you can visualize if your treatment is successful, if the pathology regresses. It has the complication of being difficult to deliver to. The cornea in itself is almost a barrier for infection, viruses, bacteria, you can imagine it's there for nature to try and prevent those things entering into the eye. It's difficult to deliver to, but if we can overcome that battle, we certainly can have a gene therapy that hopefully will be successful. The good thing about CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing is you only have to deliver it once. So you don't have to have a continual delivery. We're very hopeful that we can if we can get it into enough cells at a high enough level, it would be a once-off treatment. And during that once-off treatment, it would gene edit the genetic mistake. So there's a huge interest worldwide in CRISPR companies and development of the technology. Um, I'm very for fortunate that thanks to Professor John Marshall and Avellino Labs USA, we now have a partnership with the university. And that's a collaborative agreement where they pay for all the research that's required to try and move this forward into a clinical trial stage. It's exciting. For me, it's exciting to be involved in it. But it's also great for those patients that have lived for so long with no hope of a therapy. And as one mother said to me, my child is born with vision, but I know if she inherits this mutation from me, this disease will steal her vision. So it's a lot to live with knowing that your vision is going to gradually and gradually deteriorate. This CRISPR gene editing technique actually has the potential to remove that disease trait from an entire lineage of a family. I would like to think we would end up 
at a stage in personalised medicine where everyone would be pre-screened for whatever mutations that they contain that predisposed them to a certain disease and we could treat people. If this became commonplace in common practice in medicine, could we ever imagine reaching a stage where we would gene edit individuals before the disease appeared? That would be phenomenal.